Hi, Jared Hoyman with VisibleTour.com, and today the battle is not over. I am bringing it back. It is the R7. I'm pointing at the right one too. This is the R7. This is the R6. We are doing the 60 frame per second battle. <laughs> This one is gonna be more on equal terms, not counting the sensor sizes, because the sensor size of the R7 obviously is smaller than the R6. There probably will be, that's my expectation, more noise with low light when it comes to the R7 than the R6, but what is the sharpness gonna look like? I am I'm curious myself. This is a battle that I wanna know the outcome because if I can use the R7 for video walkthroughs for real estate, that is something I'd be excited to do. But if it has a lot of noise, it's not as sharp as the R6, well then we're sticking with the R6. I will tell you right away though, the battle is already won when it comes to overheating in 60 frames per second because the R7 is looking pretty cool. And the R6 is telling me that it has probably about 15 minutes of record time because of the heat outside. So, this would be more prone to overheat, which I have had it overheat on the job. It is unfortunate. I have to wait a few minutes, let it cool down and get some more shots. The R7, 60 frames per second. I have not had overheat issues for anything that I've used it for so far. So we'll see how this goes. We are gonna do the 60 frames per second. Why would you do 60 frames per second? By the way, it's August. Everything is just chirping and making noises out here. So hopefully that doesn't bother you during this test. So in the 60 frames per second, we are gonna do a couple tests. Now, why would you film in 60 frames per second? Well, people like Tony Northrup love filming in 60 frames per second and playback in 60 frames per second because it has that smooth motion. I personally don't like it. For me, I like to film in 60 frames per second, put it in a 24 frame per second timeline, slow it down 40%, then you get the nice slow motion. And when it comes to real estate photography and video, that's how it's done. That's how I get the slow motion and then do some image stabilization afterwards. So we are gonna be filming this both in 60 frames, slowing it down to 24 frames. So that's 40% slow and see how that goes. Are these both gonna be the same sharpness? So I'm just gonna run around in this test. So this is the static test. Both of these are on tripods. Um, we've got the 15 to 35 millimeter 2.8 RF Canon lens, that's an L series, and the 24 to 70. This is at 15, this is at 24. Focal length should be close, but obviously there's a little bit of distortion when it comes to the 15, but at least the framing should be pretty close. And I'm gonna run back and forth. Image stabilization is turned off on both of these. Um, I will turn image stabilization on when I put this on a gimbal in the next test and see how that goes with IBIS and see if that stays sharp as well. Speaking of overheating, let's move on to the next challenge because I'm definitely overheating here. We are on the R7, 60 frames per second, 125th shutter, aperture is 3.2, ISO is 200, again 15 millimeter which is about a 24 millimeter equivalent when it comes to framing from a full frame. You take a 60 frames per second, you put it in a 24 frame per second timeline, that gives you 40% speed which is nice and slow and this is what i use when it comes to 
property real estate walkthroughs. And the reason I do IBIS is I have found it, even with Wobble, to be more effective with my video walkthroughs. I know a lot of people will disagree, but for my workflow, I like it. And then I can work on image stabilization and post as well to make it even more stabilized. So this is the R6 now at 60 frames per second, 125th shutter, 3.2 aperture, ISO is 200. And again, I didn't mention this, but we are in standard profile. We're not doing log. I wanted to be a little bit more equal since I suck at grading log and both of these handle log a little bit differently. And we're slowing down as well. So we've got that nice slow look. So we just put these both on a gimbal. We walked around the backyard. What was your thought on that? We're gonna go back onto the computer in just a minute and take a look at this footage. I'm gonna zoom in, do a little bit more. And then I'm gonna give you my final analysis because I'm the one that's gonna be looking at this in greater detail when it comes to Premiere Pro and any kind of video editing software. And what I think is more accurate in picture, sharpness and look especially noise, because the R7 essentially is gonna be a lot more noisier, kind of like my neighbors. They're pretty noisy, as you can tell. So we're gonna do that. I will tell you again, though, we're down to five minutes record time on the R6. So this thing is just burning up fast. So for reliability, I can use it. I know its limitations. I know the R6 limitations, so I'm able to kind of estimate that at jobs. But for somebody that isn't familiar with the R6, the R7 is going to be a lot more um, reliable when it comes to 60 frames per second. So let's bring it onto the computer and we'll go right there right now. So I got back in, I looked at all the, um, the footage and I was actually pretty impressed with both of them. The R6 was amazing, the R7 is amazing. The problem that you get when you're looking at an APS-C compared to a full frame is there is gonna be a different look when you're trying to frame up the same size. So the 15 millimeter compared to the 24 millimeters, I could tell the depth perception is a little bit off. The R6, in my opinion, is better looking footage because of the depth perception, but there's one thing we didn't do in this test and maybe I can do it in another test and that would be taking a 14 millimeter EF lens on a speed booster which would bring it to around 16 millimeters and compare it to the 15 millimeters and see if you get that same kind of compression or similar. Um, because if that's the case, then the R7 might be the best route to go because you are now not worried about overheating like the R6 um, and you have a little bit more versatility. So that would be the route I would go and maybe I will. Well, that's all I got for you today. Um, if you haven't already, please subscribe, please like. Uh, if you like these kind of videos, I'm more than happy to get more of them out to you and do these comparisons. Um, let me know what you think of the audio on this one because I'm actually using the Rode NTG5, which is, in my opinion, awesome. I mean, I'm loving it. Um, again, I do not get sponsored much, and I'm not sponsored by Rode. I've never been sponsored by Rode, so everything Rode that I have purchased is my own money. I am connected to the Tascam um, uh, XLR adapter onto the R7 which I got to do a review on this. Again, my own money. I spent my own money on this. It is amazing um, having XLR on this. Pretty much the R7 is like having a cinematic camera. And I think I'm going to do a review on that as well. So stay tuned because on a budget, the R7 makes an amazing cinematic camera. So again, if you haven't already, I would appreciate your subscription and your like because I'm just superficial. Anyways, Jared from visibletour.com. I will talk to you in the next video. Hey, this video might be done, but there's some more you can watch. If you missed the previous videos on the R7 versus the R6, please click the following links and enjoy those videos as well.